The alphabet that we all use today is referred to as the Roman alphabet. And this photo shows us what is arguably the best example of it, dating back almost 2,000 years. This is the Trajan Column inscription in ancient Rome. This is the original Roman alphabet in all its glory and the foundation of every modern letter style that we're used to seeing. And if ever there were rules carved in stone applicable to lettering, then here they are right here. So I've designed this alphabet with a subtle thick and thin element to it, which not only looks better, but also provides us with a more refined style that still has the feel of a traditional sign writer's block lettering, while adhering to the classic rules of lettering, which are very important to learn. So once you understand the fundamentals that go into this style, you'll understand how they apply to practically every style that follows the classic rules. Not all letters are the same width, so it's very important to understand what determines one letter's width in relation to another. Even a word that's been drawn with perfectly constructed individual letters can still look problematic if the widths of certain letters are incorrect in relation to others. Here's an example. Three horizontal strokes. A simple enough concept, but when we look at this mechanically drawn E to the left compared with the Helvetica E on the right, it's pretty easy to see the difference between a letter that's been drawn mechanically with no understanding of nuance and the more refined Helvetica on the right. I encourage you to train your critical eye to recognize the visual center so that it's not always necessary for you to rely on specific dimensions and calculations all the time. Because as we say in this business, if it looks right, it is right. And if it looks wrong, it's wrong, regardless of what the measurements say. Often something that's measured perfectly on a letter or layout can still look off center depending on what elements you're working with. But for the sake of having a hard number to reference, which is also useful, the visual center of a letter resides at 52% of the letter height when measured from the bottom. Super important, because as I mentioned earlier, you can make a word with technically correct letters, but for example, if you have an E that's the same width as a B, or a H that's the same width as an L or an M, you're going to have some noticeable issues as you can see here. The B is one of those letters that we had a bit of a study of earlier on. There's a few tweaks and nuances that we do to this B to make it the beautiful thing that it is. So let's have a bit of an overview before we start. So the main thing, or some of the main points with the B, the top section of our B should be physically smaller than the bottom section. So that means this counter is going to be physically smaller than this counter. Now, next thing I want to do is draw in the curve for this counter. And we draw the counter in first because the counter shape of a letter, like these holes in the middle, like the O and the B, that's actually the shape that your eye recognizes uh, when you look at a letter. Your eye doesn't recognize this curve so much, but it really recognizes these counter shapes. Kind of like looking through a window, you'll recognize the shape of the window before you recognize the shape of the wall. But eventually, once you get used to it and once you get it down, um, down the road, you'll find yourself just throwing away the measurements throwing away the imaginary rectangles and you're able to draw nice lettering um, just by having built that foundation. And years down the track, you may, may not even remember how you got to that stage, but, um, but starting out, we like to keep everything nice and structured, work within these parameters, and that really helps us build a solid foundation. So later on, we can you know throw, throw the workbook away and just work by eye, which is a beautiful thing. We've removed all of this bulk in here which has really opened up the counter there, as you can see when you look at our green line. And it's made our intersection stroke here quite a lot thinner. So it's that now, it was basically that. And same on the bottom now, we've got that when it was previously that. And that gives us a nice nuanced looking B. We really want to make it a nice permanent job. That's also cool, but let's get it drawn in properly.
So let's have a quick look at this five before we get into drawing it. The main feature, of course, is this nice big round curve, which is one of those lovely curves that if we're not careful can get a bit out of control and look a bit on the tipsy side, so we don't want that. So what do we do? Well, we look into the internal structure of our lettering and find ourselves a good solid framework that we can work around and create a nice, balanced, well-structured letter. So let's just go from here. This will be the apex of our curve, right dead center. So I'm just gonna bring that out. I'll get down on my knees again. So here's my apex if I go straight across from three o'clock. All right, so we come out. I'm looking up a long way here, but Anyway, so I want to come out, that's my apex, I want to keep that within the rectangle and I'm going to gradually come down nice and smooth to my six o'clock, hopefully I'll hit that mark, I think I pretty much did, of course we break the line a little bit. Now the only other thing, we're going to finish this one in a little bit shorter because we've got this big round piece here that goes out all the way to the edge, so if we were to bring our straight piece out, it's going to look longer because we've got a straight against the round. So we're just going to come in about a quarter of a thick stroke there. And that's basically our five. So let's get that sketched in permanently and have a look at it.